Okay, so I posted up the page yesterday to uh, accept submissions for my Audio Fails web show. And you guys came out strong in like six hours. I've got 19 submissions. And I'm noticing a trend here. One is there's one local shop that really needs to step up their game because they account for more than half of the submissions. That's not good. Um, another thing I'm noticing is a lot of them are remote starts and things of that nature that aren't working. Now, give you a couple hints here. Just because remote starts are kind of boring for me to repair. I mean, if it's a really bad hack job, I'll do it just because the photos are worth it. But remember, you have to pay for the equipment. So I'll fix your remote start, but you got to pay for the new remote start and the bypass and everything. And those aren't the cheapest things. That's why there's no such thing as a $99 remote start, even though you'll see those same shops post them stupid signs all over the place in the winter. Um, one thing though, so I've had a lot of people that have submitted that their remote starts are draining their batteries ever since they were installed, or they've had issues with the vehicle as far as electrical ever since it was installed. First thing you want to do is you need to take it back to the shop that did it, even though I know you don't want to. They need to swap the brain out, reprogram a new brain and put it in. A remote start should not be able to draw down your battery in any way because it's not doing anything. The only time a remote starts actually doing anything is when you activate it. Outside of that, it's just a dead plastic box. It's not doing a damn thing. Um, if it is doing anything, if it is drawing any current, then it has either a bad capacitor, it's got something inside the brain that has failed and it needs to be replaced. Now, if that doesn't fix it, then I don't know how you can even remote wire up a remote start to drain a battery. I mean, really, I don't. I don't know what wire you would hook up that would be like, aha, this is the battery drain battery. It, there's really nothing there. It's not active. So I don't even know what they would do to make that happen. But, you know, if that doesn't fix it, then yeah, I guess you have something going on. Another thing is you have to check your battery. A lot of people have shitty batteries. And they don't realize it. And this is very common. And I get a lot of installs, all do, where people will say, hey man, ever since you did that, my battery's dying. Everybody likes to point at the installer when their battery's dying. Here's the thing. Basically, what we did was we put in higher voltage equipment. We put in equipment that's better, and we put in equipment that's newer, and we put in equipment that pushes more power, whether it be a head unit, whether it be amplifiers, whatever it is. But what we've also done is we have put a new strain onto your old shitty battery. So your battery was a piece of shit, okay? But you never knew that because running off all the factory equipment, it was able to just kind of struggle and get by. But now that we put in new equipment, it has revealed itself as a piece of shit battery. So a lot of times a new battery. You have to realize batteries are only good. Here in Indiana, you have about a three years, okay? If it's a standard battery, you just bottle it at AutoZone or whatever you did. Sorry about that, I had to sniff. Allergies. But if you bought it at AutoZone or anything like that, your battery life in Indiana is about a three year battery life. And why is that? Well, that's because we have very cold winters here. The colder the winters, your battery gets its ass kicked every winter. All right? Now, if you live in California, you can get six, seven, eight years out of a battery. But here you can't. So if you bring me a 2011 vehicle and I look under the hood and it's got the factory battery and then after I do the install and you tell me hey I'm having battery issues I'm gonna tell you right now your battery's piece of shit it's the first thing you need to do now of course you don't want to hear that because the battery is expensive so you're like well that's bullshit this installer's just lying to me and now I gotta go spend you know hundred fifty dollars on a battery because he doesn't want to admit that he did a shitty job blah 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 no I gotta defend installers on that one man it's your battery so, for installers out there, just to cover your ass, before you do a big build or before you do any kind of add-ons to a vehicle, if it has a battery in it that's the original battery and the car is from 2014 or before, your best bet is to explain to the customer that they may have issues. They may have dead battery issues or voltage issues, and it's not because of your install. It is because the battery's old, and they may need to replace it. Get that out of the way before you do the install. That way, 
they're not coming back on you like you're an asshole. Cool? So I am going to, I don't know, man, it's hot again today, but I got to do something. I think today we're going to get, we're going to take the 300 down to the shop, put in the uh, new equipment, even though every video I make, it's going to look like I'm being waterboarded because it's going to be so fucking hot today, but it is what it is. And uh, maybe we'll work on the garage shelves. I don't know. I don't know. I hate the heat. But thank you very much for your submission so far. Um, I'm going to comb through them. I'm going to give them a few weeks to kind of build up. I will share some of my submissions that I've gotten on Facebook. And I will share any of the really good photos. But it's very cool that people are uh, doing that. And keep it up. And if you submit and I don't pick your car, don't be mad at me or, or be all shitty. Because regardless... I'm going to try and answer every one of them's issues. So anybody that's got a submission to me, regardless, I'm going to send you an email and I'm going to try and tell you how you can fix your problem. So even if I don't pick your car to fix it, if it's something that I think I can correct just by telling you something to do, I'm going to tell you. Or if I can tell you how to get it corrected from the original installer, what they need to do. Now this one shop that has taken over most of the submissions, they're going to be a little pissy because they're going to have a flood of people bringing their shit back. And if they don't honor their warranties or their installs, then I want you to tell me because then, you know, I'm going to have to be obligated to bust them out if they don't honor their shit. So anyway, thank you very much. I'm going to get back to work. This is just one video of today. I think I'm going to make a bunch of them today. So Watch my other videos today. Take it easy.